Hello and welcome to the channel. Exposing services from a home lab or any private network comes with a few challenges. First, you need a domain. That's easy. You can just buy one. Plenty of domain resellers offer dirty, cheap domains. Next, you need a public IP. Sometimes you can get one out of the box, but often you are dealing with a dynamic IP that changes regularly. Or maybe you don't have access to your ISP router to set up port forwarding. Worse yet, you may be behind a CGNAT sharing a single public IP with multiple users. But let's say you are lucky and have a public IP. Now you need to configure DMZ network and set up port forwarding. Nothing a few firewall rules cannot handle, right? Another challenge is hosting multiple web applications behind a single IP. Easy, you can set up a reverse proxy like Nginx, AJ Proxy, Traffic or Caddy. But what about securing the connection? You will need a TLS certificate. No problem. You can use Certbot or built-in Acme client in Traffic or Caddy to get a free Let's Encrypt certificate. Then there's the authentication. You don't want to expose your service just to anyone. You could authenticate against a cloud IDP like Microsoft Entra ID or Google. If the application doesn't support that, you could add basic authentication on the reverse proxy or use a solution like Otilia or Authentic, where the reverse proxy forwards authentication request to a local IDP, which then handles logins and signals back when access should be granted. Sure, we could use Cloudflare Tunnel to expose our services, but what if you want full control over the solution? That's where Pangolin comes in a free, self-hosted, and super easy to install, all-in-one solution that addresses all these challenges. My name is Philip. let's get started. Let me show you a simple diagram so you get a feel of how it works from a high-level perspective. The basic concept is, you don't have a static public IP, so you deploy a VM in the cloud, run the VPS from a hosting provider, or set up a mini PC at your parents' house. On that VM, you configure an HTTP reverse proxy and point your domain's DNS to its public IP. Then you establish a WireGuard tunnel between your home server, where your application run, and the VM hosting the reverse proxy. Now, whenever someone connects to the cloud VM, the reverse proxy terminates the SSL connection. It also inspects the HTTP host header to determine which application they route the traffic to, then forwards it over the WireGuard tunnel to your home lab server. Before diving into the setup and configuration, let me first show you what we are trying to achieve. At home, I have an SBC running Docker hosting a PhotoPrism application. This allows me to privately store and access all my photos. However, I'd like to securely access this application while on the go, despite not having the static public IP. Thanks to Pangolin, I can simply visit photos.linuxcloudhacks.ovh and just like that, we are in. Mind that the connection is secured with TLS and the certificate is valid. I also have another PC running Docker hosting Sir XNG, a meta search engine that's focused on privacy. It's running inside my home network, but I want to access it from anywhere. Again, thanks to Pangolin, I can simply go to search.linuxcloudhacks.ovh and that's it. The server hosting this application is also on my home network, but in reality, it could be running anywhere as it maintains a WireGuard tunnel back to the VM hosting the Pangolin stack. Now, while the connection is secure, anyone can currently access these applications. Let's fix that by managing authentication in Pangolin's web console. Inside the console, we can see the list of WireGuard tunnels, as well as connection status and some traffic statistics. In our case, we have two tunnels from two servers in the same location, but Pangolin allows multiple tunnels from different locations, all terminating at this VM. Similarly, multiple applications can sit behind a single tunnel. Now, let's go to the resource tab where we define proxies to our applications. Here's the application name, information about the WireGuard tunnel that points to the application and the application URL. This column shows if authentication for the application is enabled. Okay, let me click edit on one of the resources. In the general tab, I can set the subdomain name, set which domain to use, and also select which WireGuard tunnel to use. 
Under the connectivity tab, we can enable SSL, allowing reverse proxy to handle TLS offloading and automatically obtain a Let's Encrypt certificate. Down below, we define the backend servers hosting our application that reside behind WireGuard tunnels. If needed, I can add multiple targets and the proxy will load balance traffic between the targets. Also, I can disable a target during maintenance so it won't get traffic. Moving to the authentication tab. To protect access, Pangolink offers three authentication options. Option one is pin code authentication. Let's do that. I will click add pin code and enter a number. If I go back to the resource tab, we can see protected under the authentication column. Let's try to access the application now. We are prompted for a pin. Let's provide that and we are in. Another authentication option is the shared password authentication. To do that, I will click add password type my password and click Enabled Password Protection. Now, if I go back to our application, I can either pick a PIN or enter a password. Let's try the password option. Works. PIN and shared passwords are useful for low security use cases, like read-only dashboards, but for more control, we can use individual user accounts and roles. Let me go to User and Roles tab. I will create a new user. Let's provide email. Set the role to member and click save. Since email notifications are disabled, I will copy the link and open it in a new browser. Here, we'll specify account credentials and click login. I can also enable two-factor authentication. To do that, I will click enable two-factor and provide the user's password. We can scan this QR code with an authenticator app. Instead, I'll just copy the secret and run the OATH tool that will generate a one-time password. Let's put it in the authenticator code field and click submit. I will now go back to the authentication tab of our application and remove the shared password and pin authentication methods. Instead, I will tick use platform SSO and grant access for our newly created user. Now let's click save. Mind that admins always have access to the applications, so you don't have to put them on the list. Moreover, you can also target specific groups and individual users. Okay, let's go to our application. I'm immediately prompted for a username and password. Let's try to log in with a newly created user. I'm prompted for the second factor. Let's generate the code, enter it here, and we are in. Mind that, from now on, I don't have to re-authenticate anymore on this device as I got a session cookie. There's also an option to generate a temporary shareable link. Let me go to shareable links and click create. I will select the application I want to share and configure for the link to expire in one hour. Then I will click create. Now let's copy the link. Here we can see it's only valid for one hour. Let me open it in a new window. We got immediately redirected to the application by passing Pangolinx authentication. The screen you see here is the Photo Prism authentication page. Now, let me delete the shared link and I try accessing the application again. We got information that the URL is invalid. Okay, just to sum up, with Pangolinx, we can set up multiple WireGuard tunnels across different locations to securely expose multiple applications. Pangolin will automatically manage SSL and Let's Encrypt certificates. Moreover, it can enforce authentication using PIN codes, shared password, user accounts and roles, also with two-factor, as well as generate temporary shareable links for controlled access. How cool is that? Okay, that's it for the demo. The user interface is very clean, so you won't have any issues exposing your application to the internet. Let's now move to the more interesting part. I will show you how to set it up and how it's all wired. There are a few prerequisites. First, we need a domain. If you don't have one, here's a video where I show you how to get one. Next, we need a Linux server with a static public IP to host the Pangolin stack. If you are using a cloud VM or a VPS, you typically already have a public IP assigned. Only thing you need to do is open the firewall for port 80 TCP, 443 TCP, that's for HTTP and HTTPS traffic, and port 51820 UDP for WireGuard traffic. If your server is at home, then the public IP is most likely assigned to your router. 
You have to set up port forwarding to the pangolin server. Port 80 TCP on the WAN interface should be forwarded to port 80 on the server in DMZ. The same goes for port 443 TCP and also port 51820 UDP. The exact setup depends on your provider or network configuration, but the key requirement is ensuring the pangolin server is reachable on those three ports. Next, we need to update the DNS to point to the server's public IP. First, let's check the public IP of our Linux server. Let me copy that. Now, in the DNS handling our domain, in our case it's Cloudflare, we need to add two A records. One that points to the root domain to that public IP. Let's click other record. Usually add symbol serves as the root for the domain. Let's paste the server IP and click save. The second rule will point all subdomains to the public IP. All subdomains are represented by an asterisk. Okay, DNS setup is done. To host the pangolin stack, we need Docker. I already have it installed, but if you don't, the installer will handle the installation automatically. First, let's download the pangolin installer. Then let's run it with sudo. The setup process begins by asking for a domain name. I will enter Linux Cloud Hacks OVH. Next, I will accept the default URL for the management dashboard by pressing enter. The installer then asks for an email address for the Let's Encrypt certificate. I will provide one. Now we are prompted to install Gerbil, which handles WireGuard tunnels. The only reason to skip this is if you are setting up pangolin on a local server that act purely as a reverse proxy with authentication. Since we are installing it on a remote VM, we need WireGuard support enabled. Next, we set up the admin user. There's an option to enable SMTP, allowing Pangolin to send emails, but I will skip that for now. Now we wait a few moments while Docker pulls and starts the containers. I will also disable CrowdSec for now. That's an intrusion detection and prevention system. We will cover that another time. In just a few minutes, we have a fully working system. Let's open the Pangolin dashboard and log in with the admin user. The dashboard prompts us to create our first organization. Let's do that. I will skip creating tunnels for now, and we are in. Now let's go to the server in my home network, where we'll be hosting applications. It's running Ubuntu and has Docker installed. To install PhotoPrism, we need to download its Docker Compose file. Inside this file, we can find the initial admin username and password. Now, let's bring up the application stack using Docker Compose. The dash D flag ensures the containers run in the background. To expose the application to the internet, let's go to the Pangolin's console. Here we'll create a new WireGuard tunnel between the Pangolin server and our home VM. I will click Add Site, let's name the tunnel Home, and copy the Docker Compose configuration for the NEWT container. NEWT is a WireGuard client. Then let's click Create. Now, back onto Home Server. Let's open the Docker Compose file. At the end of the file, we'll add the NEWT container definition. Then we'll start NEWT container with Docker Compose app. If we go back to the Pangolin console, we'll see a tunnel is established. Now let's expose the PhotoPrism application via Pangolin. I will go to Resources, click Add a resource, name it Photos, set the subdomain to Photos, and click Create a resource. Next, in the hostname field, we'll enter the Docker service name for PhotoPrism. Since NEWT and PhotoPrism containers share the same Docker network, we can reference PhotoPrism by its service name. Let's also copy the service listening port, enter the port in the Pangolin console, and click Add a target. Finally, let's save the configuration and test access to the application. Success! The application is now accessible from the internet. Let me walk you through what's actually happening behind the scenes. I will start by going to the Pangolin GUI and add another tunnel. I will name it test. Let me copy the newt command. newt is a WireGuard client that runs entirely in user space, meaning no root access is required to run it. You won't see a WireGuard interface in IP link or WG show commands. It behaves like a regular application handling encryption and decryption of packets, key exchange and UDP packet processing. 
Now, let's run the newt command on our server. How newt works, it sends the ID and secret to the pangolin endpoint via a standard HTTP request. If the credentials are valid, pangolin issues a session token. This token is a temporary credential that proves the client has been authenticated. Using that token, newt will connect to pangolin's WebSocket. WebSockets allow real-time bidirectional communication between the client, that is newt, and the server, that is the pangolin. Unlike traditional HTTP requests, which are typically one-way, client requests server response, WebSockets allow the server to also send data to the client. This is similar to what's used in the chat applications or online gaming. If we check the logs, we'll see that newt receives the WireGuard server's IP, port, public key, and assigned peer IP. With this information, newt establishes the WireGuard tunnel. Now, let's run a lightweight HTTP server on our VM. That will be our application. Miniserve is now listening on port 8080 TCP. Next, we'll configure Pangolin to expose this Miniserve instance over the test tunnel. I'll go to Resources and click Add a resource. Let's name it Mini. Then let's select Test Tunnel, specify the domain we want to use, and click Create. Now I will specify the backend server as 127.0.0.1 and port as 8080 TCP. Mind that you should specify the target address from the newt application perspective, as it's the newt application that will make the connection to the backend server. In our case, the newt application connects to localhost to reach miniserve. After saving the configuration, if we check the newt logs, we'll see that a new TCP proxy has been created. Traffic will now be relayed to the target service through that proxy. Let's try accessing the miniserve application. It works. Mind that everything happens within the newt application. You don't need to manually configure WireGuard keys or deal with NF tables for proxying. The tunnel and the TCP proxy are fully controlled by Pangolin through a WebSocket connection. Everything is dynamic, automated, and seamless. Now let's take a look at the server-side components. There are three main services running. Pangolin, that's the management system we've already seen. Gerbil, that's the WireGuard management server. And Traffic, a modern reverse proxy. Let me open LazyDocker and access the Traffic container shell. If we check Traffic's configuration, we'll see it uses a dynamic HTTP provider. Essentially, Traffic queries Pangolin's REST API every five seconds to retrieve its configuration. Let's manually call that API. From the response, we can see that the configuration includes our newly created mini service, which points to the remote end of the test WireGuard tunnel we set up earlier. To sum up, Traffic examines the host header and routes traffic to the correct application behind WireGuard tunnels. Traffic handles TLS termination and automatically renews certificates via Let's Encrypt. Traffic uses middleware called uh, Badger, which integrates with Pangolin to enforce secure authentication and session management. Since Traffic supports dynamic configuration, it continuously updates its routing rules by fetching new configuration from Pangolin's API every few seconds. Finally, let's look at Gerbil, which handles the server-side management of WireGuard tunnels. On the machine hosting the Pangolin stack, I will open LazyDocker to access Gerbil's shell. As expected, Gerbil fetches its configuration from Pangolin's API. Additionally, Gerbil sends bandwidth statistics back to Pangolin, allowing them to be displayed in the GUI. In essence, Gerbil dynamically adds and removes WireGuard peers based on the configuration it retrieves from Pangolin. And that's it for today. Pangolin is a powerful solution designed with a microservices architecture where each component serves a dedicated purpose. It leverages cutting-edge technology, WireGuard for tunneling, traffic as a reverse proxy, and lightweight Docker containers that can run anywhere. Plus, it's incredibly easy to set up and configure. Best of all, Pangolin is actively developed, meaning we can expect exciting new features and integrations in the future. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.